Hello and welcome back to the next talk. It is called Revolution of the Typo 3 Experience and it is here to bring back the spirit of the old Typo 3 days. Please welcome with me Petra and Jo Hasenau. Um, first of all, I have to um, give you a, sh a short explanation. Maybe I will just turn on the sound a bit. Um, why it, uh, it's uh, another title? Because actually, in the schedule, it's T3 Dust, and now it's T3 UXW. We just had the problem that we wanted to do two different events during the year, which now have been merged to just one. So we have the T Title 3 User Experience Week, which included what we wanted to do as T3 Dust, actually. Uh, together with that, we merged uh, and rearranged some other things about the Type 3 user experience. For example, where there is a new user experience team in the core team of Type 3, and it has a new leader who is over there and uh, hopefully listening. Felix, can you come up to the stage, please? This is the, uh, the new leader of the Type 3 user experience team. Um, he has been at the user experience week as well. Um, and what we actually want to do is to show you um, not just uh, what we did, but the people who have been there. So we had T3 Batman as well. <laughs> and we had and Andrea who was there as well. Um, is Dirk already here, Dirk Jutner? Not yet, maybe he will come later. Um, because everybody who's actually here at this event will be visible on the stage. They can tell you some sentences about what we did because we have to, don't have too much time for all the different tasks and topics. And everybody else will be visible on the screen. So um, maybe we just start with the uh, first thing. Um, we had 30 people, just like with the uh, last user experience week, uh, which was in 2009. And gathering in the middle of nowhere, uh, which is quite a good idea because you want to have less distraction and more focus on um, what you actually want to do. Then we had some team building uh, days in the beginning and we did some other uh, stuff uh, which was about socializing, which is a very important topic when you want to work together for a whole week with people who never met before. Um, so we did some uh, events in the evening as well. Um, to be able to do that, we started with a visit of a uh, mine, which is around the area where we uh, met. So we had to dig deeper into the history of the product. So this was resembling what we did and just show what people can do when they're working together. Um, after that, the event started, but we had prominent help because where is he? Uh, he must leave. He must leave. Okay, but he's still available on the screen. T3 Batman was with us. I have came to your hearts to find each other. I've heard he's So he was there as well. And after that, uh, we started with the actual event, which was uh, three teams for three major topics that we defined in the beginning. Um, these topics were backend usability, which was actually the major topic for Felix. Um, distributions, which was a, a topic for uh, the themes and distributions team, and theme packages. This is what we concentrated. Uh, and, ah, Dirk is already there, so he was at the user experience week as well, so he can uh, tell you something um, about this as well. Um, what we wanted to do different uh, in comparison to the first user experience week um, where we, there was a lot of actionism and yeah, we want to do that and we have extra ass and we want to get it into the core and do it quick and dirty. We wanted to have um, the concepts first, then prototypes and then the patch to merge and maybe even just have just concepts and prototypes when we leave the event and work on that later on. So we didn't want to hurry and I think this worked out quite well. So let's start with the backend usability subtask. Maybe I can give you a mic. It has been here. Where is it? Ah, oh, here. Oh, there. Ah, okay. Oh. 
so uh, I this is too far as project manager and whole uh, and the whole team. Um, I think we've got a lot of things done. Um, the concepts that we're setting up are really, really awesome. And um, I like the remote location and um, I really like the diversity within the teams. So it's very, can you, can very you see different it? people from very different <laughs> backgrounds working together. Yeah, maybe you can do this one. So this one about the strong defaults in JDF. Yeah, we've been, we've been talking about, especially talking about the field rearrangement because we have a lot of content elements in the Type 3 CMS backend which are, uh, let me say, a little bit outdated. So there, we have responsive web design, we have a, a few different things which we need to address and uh, we've been uh, talking about uh, the, the feature which we need to rearrange content elements to be able to deliver good video, good responsive web, and so on. We also have been talking about um, the streamer and forms, which was a really um, a com complicated task, especially because um, when you have forms on a website and you want to generate data, you want to, to get uh, feedback from the users who use your website, it's always some kind of custom task. It's really complicated to just see what the feedback is and what the informations are. But I think we generated a few very interesting um, uh, um, uh, concepts, especially for the streamlined forms. And which is not on here as well, we've been talking about the rearranged backend as well because we wanted to have the possibility to get a backend which is tablet friendly, which we'll you can use on in the, in the next slide. In the next slide. <laughs> not exactly this one, but. Hello, I'm Sava. I worked on the dashboard team. I also worked with the clipboard, having an idea to have a new clipboard. Also, I worked with TQL. And the event was nice and a lot of great people. Uh, this was uh, another task, it was a clipboard refactoring because the clipboard is not very, uh, working very intuitive and there were some ideas about having it always visible in any module, not just in the uh, page or list module or wherever you need it, um, that you will be able to copy and just, just stay here, don't leave. <laughs> you have to say something else. Um, copy content instead of records is a quite good idea because then you have, for example, a record with this containing text and images and you can just copy uh, the part of the text into another record and not the whole record. So this was the idea to just have a, a real kind of clipboard. And we already have concept sketches available. You can see some of them in the background, but you will get links later on. So this is something that you can say something about again. <laughs> Uh, in the beginning of the year, we started uh, thinking about what the USPs are, the unique selects points for the CMS are. And uh, we realized uh, that we don't only present websites. We also have um, a lot of projects where you work with data, a lot of data, records, health data, user data, and so on and so on. So we have a lot of projects where we have uh, structured data, cascaded data, where you can unfold uh, things and so on. and. Um, Following this approach where we said we want to be very, very, very good over the whole life cycle of a single data. You create data, you edit data, you roll back in time and say, oh, the change I did a few times already did not go well. Um, then you present the data and delete data again. So when we are really good at each and every step in the life cycle of a single record, a user, a content element, a book entry or something like that, then we can perform really, really, really well in the CMS market because we're not only a presentation but also a content management system. Following this approach, we said we wanted to have a good backend, a good backend where you can work distraction free, where you don't have a lot of functions which are in your way. You focus on a single task, and this single task should be some kind of context in which you change where you say, I want to work on news. And you start the work on news. I want to work on users. And you start the work on users. And this is going to be a context change where we say the switch between a backend module from one to the other task should be app-like. I want to open an app to edit news. I want to open an app to work with the health data or something like that. So we decided to go on an approach where we say less switching between backend modules, more focused tasks, and distraction-free. And those are the th uh, three things which we, which we decided to do in the backend app. Okay. My name is 
Mr. John Koch from the FPS5 located in Mönchengladbach. I'm specialized in front-end UX design and usability, so my main part here was to ensure that the backend will be future-proof uh, and mobile-ready in the future, and we did a lot of stuff on, on that and on the introductory package. So this is, I think, the, le the last talk that, you, uh, that we need some information about uh, the things you did because this is the, your Twitter bootstrap-based layout that you already provided with a flat extension. Um, in order to get a fully responsive backend in the Type 3 CMS, we have a few technological tasks which we need to tackle as well because it, of course, needs to adapt to the screen size as well. On a tablet, you don't have enough screen as on a 30-inch monitor, for example. So to tackle this responsive backend, we decided to go for a Twitter bootstrap um, approach, which was Twitter bootstrap before, which is a TWBS bootstrap now. And the bootstrap is a very good step in the direction for future-proof development of unified, standard HTML5 backend elements, uh, which are well documented. And this process uh, started uh, in the beginning of the year and was um, uh, discussed further at the top three uh, user experience week this year. Um, this, of course, not only is a technological decision which to use, foundation or bootstrap, but also as a commitment to saying we want to have a good HTML5 groundwork which is documented and is uh, used in the wild because we can just not create something new. Yeah, and, and something very important about that is, is this accessible forms because uh, currently, we just have to deliver accessible websites for the front end, but uh, there are initiatives in the uh, EU and in other um, organizations where they will force you to provide uh, accessible backends for software as well. So uh, when we want to stay in some markets, for example, with governmental solutions or with larger companies, we will have to provide an accessible backend as well to stay in the market and not be replaced by something else. So this is very important to have a highly standardized structured backend. Hello, my name is Alexandra. I've been working this week in the backend team on a couple of different projects, workspaces, rollback, the backend language lingo, and iconography. I do love to work with people all over the world, international teams, um, having different backgrounds and getting so much stuff done. Thank you. Yeah, actually, this uh, backend lingo thing was about um, Type 3 being uh, a bit too developer-oriented when it talks to you. So it gives you error messages, but the, the uh, average editor won't understand what it says when it says, for example, um, exception thrown at line whatever and gives you a certain number. So we want to uh, have this um, um, more friendly uh, language for the messages. We want to have an understandable labels. So we want to have um, a type of three talking to you uh, in a way that it will be understandable even for beginners. Um, this is something uh, which we can't achieve in, which in just one week, uh, but we have to uh, take care of that and maybe uh, work together with a documentation team and maybe translators of diff the different languages, but to get it into um, yeah, um, away from the develop-oriented uh, um, speech. This is what their goal was of this task uh, for us, and uh, I think, uh, have someone, have you, uh, you uh, joined these teams? No? Okay, so we will just go back. My name is Bode Eichstedt. I'm getting the feet sturdy in the morning, go do, going on a hiking, and then the uh, rest of the day, getting the hands dirty and doing type of three backend stuff, like creating a dashboard, uh, thinking about titling stuff, and uh, helping out other team. Yeah, this dashboard thing is uh, something that we just thought about, but uh, there, um, it will be based on the app API because uh, actually in the dashboard you will see different apps for different tasks. You can arrange them however you like for your uh, needs. You can do that on the user base, um, then save that and have um, the backend work uh, the way you want it to do. And this is uh, just available as a concept currently because uh, there is no API available. We have to do the API first and then create the actual dashboard. Um, but this is, for example, something we just picked up from the first user experience week because the ideas have always been there, um, but uh, we want to uh, now get them into action. So this is uh, something what we did as well. 
Hi there, I'm Martin from Switzerland and I'm currently struggling with the multi channeling in Type 3. But as we have a really cool group here, it's easy going and I really like to be here with all the Type 3 guys and girls. <laughs> Yes, together with Martin and Paul, uh, I worked on multi-channeling. We tried to find um, a definition of this, and we produced lots of uh, paper and um, to figure out what uh, we can serve in Type 3 as a multi-channel system, and we also. Uh, wanted to get rid of the language overlays and use locales. And we have locales and we have channels. So we put some information um, on Google Drive, not only a, um, a PDF or a PowerPoint, we had definitions of this. And I don't imagine it in the moment it, because it was lots of stuff and lots of work, even on fallbacks for different channels like mobile or desktop or wearable, and even on fallbacks for different languages or different international um, stuff. I think it actually matches uh, what you had in your first talk, Rick, uh, when you talked about this responsive web design is stupid. Um, um, we should be uh, context-oriented and um, situational uh, web design would be the solution. I think this will be fitting into this area as well. Yeah. I'm Paul Bourdieu, coming from France. I'm project manager. And I worked in, on workspace project in backend limbo and integration in tradition package documentation. And what I like it the most is uh, finding again this crispy feeling from the very first type of events. Yes, I worked with Paul, Alexandra, and um, Martin on workspaces, and it was very great to so we could play different rules in the same room and tried out testing what workspaces are now really doing, what is not working, and how we can solve the problems. Because we need the workspaces, but they are not, re not very well working. And there are lots of bugs, and we collected it, and had some ideas for the future, uh, for new features, which we think we really need in the workspaces. So actually, this is not just about bug fixing and staying with the current concept, but really replacing it with some better ideas how it should be done uh, to make it work for most of the people who have problems with workspaces right now. Still needs some love, but um, we, we are planning some uh, more events like that, and you will see it in one of the next slides. Hi, everyone. My name is Fabian. Uh, I work on the category and um, it was enjoyable and uh, make designing, uh, making some uh, wireframes and uh, presenting and I think we're on the good track. Okay, the problem with the categories or the, the biggest problem with the categories is that the co categories are globally, um, even if you have a, a multiple web, uh, m multiple pages in, in one type of three instance, and uh, you are nearly unable to find where the editors put the categories in, and uh, they will mix in the page tree, and you will have lots of problems, but uh, nobody uh, saw this problem, and now we had to fix it, and there are some workarounds which you can now use uh, to make the categories usable, but it has to be fixed. Yeah. So then we had uh, something about the rollback. I don't know if, if there's anybody available on the rollback team, otherwise I would uh, tell something about that. The problem with this rollback functionality in Title 3 is that nobody actually understands what it really does. When you just look at the buttons and this uh, yeah, kind of diff thing where you have green and red and black colors, and different steps uh, where you can uh, just roll back some parts and maybe the whole thing and something uh, you don't actually know what it actually does. So what we want to do is to have it more like a timeline where you can just um, um, scroll down and uh, find out how uh, the record was been changing over time and then you can 
uh, have real buttons and not these uh, weird icons where you don't actually know what they are doing, just to make this uh, more intuitive so people will understand how this rollback is uh, working. Um, actually, this can be um, done just on an interface base, so uh, the code under the hood will still do exactly the same things, but you actually will know what you are doing then. Hi, my name is uh, Patrick Gaumont. I'm from Quebec, Canada. I spend the whole week uh, working with different people on different projects, mainly uh, categories and also on FAL. Yeah, maybe you can say something about this FAL problem. <laughs> uh, together with Patrick, I worked on FAL. <coughs> Sorry. Me, huh? No. Um, we hope that we will get a manual uh, in a few weeks uh, to have a manual for uh, editors, but also for um, admins. Um, we set up a wish list and a really need to have list, and uh, we try to figure out what we would expect from Fal because Patrick and me, uh, we work with them, so we could um, adapt some stuff which is used and was good in DAM to fail. For example, we have no search in FAL, and we made a, a wish list like on Christmas for the team. And one day later, Franz Zaris called me, and uh, he's still working on the FAL problems now. Cool. So already we have some progress uh, on the code side as well. Okay, the next one was a distribution subtask. Um, I think you can tell, uh, tell something about that, but first we uh, have some more people. My name is Andrea Moni. I was in the distribution team working on the introduction package and the documentation of the introduction package. Uh, it was a great event with a lot of people around me always uh, happened. Hello, my name is Monika. I worked in the distribution team and we started to get a guided tour in a new style to get people into Typo 3 by showing them the uh, introduction, how to come into it. I like it um, here, uh, get to know um, people from other areas and uh, come in touch with them. Hello. My name is Maria. I'm fan manager at the German Historical Institute. Uh, among other things, I'm also in charge of our website, which is uh, built on Type 3. Um, it was um, quite unexpected for me to, uh, to get here and to be part of this event, but I liked it very much. The whole atmosphere is uh, very, very nice, and uh, uh, well, I really appreciate that I um, was allowed to be part of it. And my name is Dirk. We have a lot of tasks in uh, the distribution package. One of them was to uh, uh, search the introduction package for all these little bugs and problems. And now um, it's a round thing. And if someone out there install it after the installation is in a good mood. I think that's very important. Yeah. Especially, especially for the introduction package, because this is the first time you will see Type 3 maybe in your whole life, and you have never seen it before, and then it, when it then says error to you, you won't like it anymore. Um, but we need even more in the distribution Hi, I'm team. Philip Gapper. I used this week to create a back and click guide. I really love the spirit and the social events at night. <laughs> um, in our team, we did a guide tour for backend uh, for editors, and uh, for me, it was very great to work with so many people with different backgrounds, um, like editors, project manager, developer, something else. Hi, my name is Marina van der Kooi. I worked on the distribution team on the Quick Start website and walkthrough, and I'm really excited about that because it could really help new editors to work with a, a system like Type 3. 
So actually, I will just go to the next slide as well because they did something which was combined. Uh, first, it was a quick tour distribution, and uh, the other one, uh, it will be available for, uh, for training sessions, demos, so that you can have, can have it to use it for um, your own purpose to, to just train people uh, in your company or whatever. But on the other hand, we will have this... Hi, my name is Andy, and we are working here to replace written documentation in pages and pages and pages by an interactive guided tour that uh, explains your backend in the backend to your editors. Hi, I'm Boas, and we worked on the education thing, which we called Guide or Guided Tour Extension. I really liked the diverse background of the people and how all work together so well. Hi, my name is Hans Oldhoff and this week I've worked on the guided tour which will make a great help function in Type 3 and we really liked working on this project. Can you say something about this project? Otherwise I will do. Okay, so what they are actually do, uh, already have done, they created a kind of um, overlay interface that you can use to have a real walkthrough in the back end so that you can click uh, through the back end and will, uh, it will explain itself. This is already partly done by Philip, who was the coder of this team, and uh, so we were really happy to have at least some coders available there because on the other hand, we wanted to have more designers and project managers available, but still we need coders uh, as such an event to get things done. And he really did that. Um, the first results will be available I think uh, they plan it for the camp in, in Essen, so um, it will be available soon and it will be something that you already can use, not just plans and concepts and some paperwork, so it will be actually usable. And you can expand them for other extensions and so yeah, so uh, when you, for example, not just want to explain the basic Tavo 3 backend, but for example, you want to do something for your own extension or for news or whatever, then you can still expand that so that it will work with these exten uh, extensions and explain them as well. Then we had another uh, part, which was actually mostly uh, my part and the part of the themes team, which was uh, Kai. Hello, I'm Kai. Um, I work on the theme staff and uh, assisted at the guiding extension and all those things because yeah, they needed some help. Um, we uh, shot before the release and yeah, it was quite nice. All the nice people around, a nice location. And yeah, I would join again. My name is Thomas, I'm part of the Title Suisse themes team and um, we had a lot of cool stuff down here in the week and it was very productive. Yeah, first of all, we had to finalize the bootstrap base, which was already crowdfunded, so we didn't have to do the concepts and stuff like that because it was already available. We just had to finalize that and it's close to being released within just the next two or three weeks. So uh, this um, bootstrap base had still to be um, yeah, kind of refactored because we worked together with the backend team and they, for example, said we had to get rid of flex forms as far as possible. So we tried to remove uh, the flex form stuff from grid elements and replace it with some fields uh, for the different bootstrap classes, which will then be uh, containing generic class names so that you, when you switch the framework and don't go for bootstrap, but maybe for foundation, you will get uh, still the same out uh, the, the, um, output of the foundation framework in the front end, but you have the same classes in the back end, so you don't have to do migrations or stuff like that. You can just switch between different uh, theme bases and then uh, between the th uh, themes as well. Hi, I'm Kerstin from Greifswald and uh, I joined the themes team. I'm building one of the very first uh, Type 3 themes with a theme extension and um, I enjoy it very much to be here. It's a very nice group. Hi, I'm Natalie from Bielefeld and I have joined two different teams. One team is Type 3 Backend, where I do dashboard and backend titles. Today I joined Team Themes and it's amazing to work in with the people here because everybody is very productive and yeah, it shows me how nice it is to be part of a Type 3 family and it was amazing. And actually it was really amazing because both of them, Kerstin and Natalie, never touched uh, themes before. We just gave it to them and said, okay, go to Red Bootstrap, uh, take a design, try to make a theme out of that. And they were just able to do most of the stuff in, within just two or three days. 
And now they are finalizing these packages, and with the crowdfunding money, we will then buy the licenses for these uh, red bootstrap designs, and the themes will be available in the TR you know, within just uh, one or two months, I think. Because then we have just to, to uh, try to fix the latest bugs so that they will be running smoothly for the people who download them, just like the introduction package, because uh, this has to be definitely bug-free. When there, is some, uh, there are still some problems, this will not be that helpful. So actually, this is what we have done. Now you can take a photo of this one, and I will hand over to Petra, yes. because she uh, can give you some insight about the numbers. Okay. At first, I'm the person in the background. Uh, the organization was my part in this, uh, by this event. And uh, here on this, um, you can see a lot of is too, too, too fast. <laughs> okay, uh, this will get some more information. Uh, I give, can you give you some more information about the people who are there? They came from all over the world, I would say, because uh, Maria from Moscow, um, then we have a person from Quebec, from Ly uh, Lyon, from France, uh, four persons from the Netherlands, and from Switzerland there are two persons, and uh, the whole area of Germany, there are a lot of people there, and it was a, a great fun. So we have 30 two people there uh, coming out from six countries. Um, they're traveling uh, 32,000 kilometers. Um, yes, we have uh, two days team building and five days of work. The team building was very um, helpful because uh, they didn't know each other and so they come together. And now we have some numbers? Or some more numbers, yeah. Some more ones. Okay, uh, when we did... Um, I uh, told you in numbers we have 1,800 hours of work uh, with 15 tasks. And um, Actually, this is one, yeah. something that we wanted to present uh, because uh, in most of the events and most of the code sprints, nobody tells you about the actual value that you get from the people attending these sprints. Yeah. There were 32 people available and they worked for more, uh, just one week and presented you uh, with all the different results. And actually, when you just calculate it in, in, in an average uh, hourly rate, this will be 120,000 euros of value that they produced during that week. So I think it's a good investment when you have 30,000 euros enabling costs provided by the Title III Association and you get back such a value. So this is why we want to do something like this again. Mm -hmm. And now the plans for the next year, for 2015. Um, we want to do a new user experience week in 2015 and uh, before the developer days starts. Um, on the same location with similar teams involved the NEOS team and uh, workshops during the developer days. Yeah, actually this means uh, when we have this uh, user experience week, hopefully it will be in April, Ho hopefully we will get the budget that we applied for from the Title III Association. Mm -hmm. But as far as I understood, most of the people really appreciated what we did there and e even the attendants were um, uh, highly appreciated what happened there and that they were able to contribute in such a way that they never had expected before. And what we want to do is to, to name some of the uh, people who are uh, responsible for the teams working at the User Experience Week and then send them to the developer days to have workshops there and bring the ideas to the developers so that we will have real connections between the different events and not just plans lying around somewhere in a PDF and nobody cares about them, which was one of the problems we had to face with the uh, first user experience week. Because still we had to pick up stuff which was created then uh, five years ago and now we want to really make it happen. So this is what we are going to do in 2015. Any questions? No, we have to thank the Type of Free Association and our great Orga team. Please refresh them for the next. Um, <laughs> and, now, and, and now it's time for questions. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions?